and the topic is very new this is the first time i'm showing these videos endoscopic management of complications of cesarean so i would just like to show few videos of uh, our management of complications of cesarean we all know cesarean section is a life saving intervention and its incidence we gynecs are you know accused of increasing cesarean rates but i won't go there are various reasons for increasing cesarean rates it's not only the obstetrician it is the societal conditions the patients and when we talk of complications every surgery has its own complications cesarean has so many big list early complications like hemorrhage injuries bowel bladder late complications like sepsis and nowadays as with they are very nicely presented this is thermosid and things like that so uh yeah isthmosil vidya has tackled tackled very nicely so i will not go into etiology diagnosis risk factors for development but in our practice more and more cases especially ivf colleagues are referring that huge isthmosil so this is a patient who i had the opportunity to correct her isthmosil so often you will find adhesions with the bladder and the scar and you will see how thin the scar usually is so this is the hysteroscopy there is an outer ring there is an inner ring and in that area of scar niche this is probably the secretory phase or sometimes when the patient is on progestogens you see this kind of picture uh, nothing to fear about and this is the below the internal ring this is the huge isthmosis so isthmosis depends how big is the size and if you have to do correction for future child bearing laparoscopy is the preferred because you have to excise and this is what illumination mri gives you idea how big is the isthmosis trans illumination through hysteroscope really helps you in mapping out many colleagues they put a needle you have to map out you will realize sometimes your case fails patient may still complain of post menstrual spotting so the secret of success is map it properly and excise completely and you see there is hardly any endometrial thickness i have just given an incision and whole area has opened up so if she became pregnant without correction she would have had high risk of scar ectopic or rupture and keep a marker here i am keeping that we care otherwise a hulka it really gives gives you so excise the isthmosil sac and suture over the years i have realized giving very low scars whenever i have operated i have seen the scar was given very very low so bypass that isthmosil area and suture it properly majority of time i find it at the left angle so these are the technical reasons how we suture in two repairs so that next time when she becomes pregnant you have nine months good sleep so i think i'll proceed on because isthmosil was very nicely covered usually scar ectopics i think i am a big expert in the north all the colleagues keep sending scar ectopics and we have very big data so again i will not go it is itself a lecture on scar ectopic sometimes they grow inside the uterus that is type a they grow outward that is type b and this is one of the patients i would like to management there are so many ways to manage this is what a uh, very nice case of scar ectopic this is a fresh video i have brought otherwise see there are bad adhesions of the anterior abdominal wall with the fundus and bladder as with they are very nicely presented bladder is at risk i will tell you the ways you will never open bladder first go to the paravesical area dissect it nicely see how bad the bladder is in this patient previously i was ligating uterine arteries but i have realized over years with correct technique they hardly bleed 
and there is hardly any need for blood transfusion. So you have to remove these bands of adhesions because star ectopic is buried between the bladder and these adhesions. So go in the correct plane, dissect the bladder in laterally both paramecycle areas. So you have clear outline of bladder and see this is a huge live scar ectopic. I think patient had 40, 50,000 HCG load. This is the in total removal. Don't give a nick in the sack. First you dissect it completely in that order. See <laughs> live baby coming out and this was in total removal of the bag from scar ectopic. If you leave this patient, she will end up in placenta accreta. And that is how sometimes you are greeted with that ugly complication where patients bleed a lot. See, hardly any lower segment tissue is there. So you have to go down, search for the internal os and the isthmus and pick up the area from there. Because if you don't give her a nice thick scar, she is going to rupture. Huge isthmocele you can see in this patient. So suturing is very important. Sometimes we commit mistake by suturing with just the superficial lower segment. You have to go to the cervix because scar is given deep in these patients. And that is how you will prevent her misery in her next pregnancy because we have number of patients who have conceived. So you always fear whether there may not be scar ectopic next time. So these are the lessons we have learned hard based colleagues that you have to repair it, understanding how exactly you will avoid recurrence of scar ectopic by suturing it to the cervical area and bypassing the whole isthmus. So this is what, and if you fear that bladder was too near, do a cystoscopy at the end, look for the ureteric jet. Majority of cases, this is not required. This is very important. I give full credit to my consultant, Dr. Kusum, in the night, eight days after cesarean, patient came with high fever, lot of bleeding, and in the middle of the night, she put up the scope. I said, you open her up, but she said, madam, we can do laparoscopically. And this was the patient and was the video. Eight days before, somewhere cesarean was done, had high grade fever, MRI showed a lot of collection between the bladder and the lower uterine segment. And you see tissues are so friable in these patients. You have to be very, very gentle, as gentle as you are handling your spouse. So this is what you have to be really gentle. Tissues are all, you know, given up and very easy to rupture. This is MRI helps you. This is MRI helps you in finding the pockets of the pus and lot of pus you will see. So the secret of success when you have a patient post cesarean, uh, maybe within a week after delivery and huge abscess, be very gentle with the tissues as you are in open and gradually painstakingly search for the pus pockets and drain them though your suction is a very good instrument and bladder is really at real risk in the next video i will show where the bladder was already ruptured and and unless you remove all the pockets your patient will not settle so this is what even in olden days we were because youngsters do surgeries in the night time and we were telling them do laparotomy but with laparoscopy her really recovery was very, very good. And the, once you start doing, you get so many cases and you see a huge cavity will come. Probably while suturing, there is hematoma, there is blood which get collected from the scar in between bladder and the scar. And that was converted into huge pus pocket. And very gently, you have to remove all the pockets of the pus and put the drain in the big pelvic cavity and the patient goes home next day very smooth and give heavy antibiotics to your patient then this was a patient who was referred to me that there is a scar dehiscence and ultrasound showed the opened up scar one month after the cesarean 
and the patient had severe bleeding pain dirty discharge because she was infected and they don't tell you but uh, when somebody looked into all the reports it showed that the bladder injury was there at the time of cesarean and this was the laparoscopic view one month after delivery seven grams patient referred with a history of bladder injury which was repaired see you have to be very very gentle in the correct place and see she was bleeding so much good olden days we were doing them from below and but nowadays we have realized you go from below the scar is already open you will say oh, oh perforation ho gaya it is not the perforation it is the already opened up scar and you will see lot of placenta by mistake was left inside maybe there was bladder injury that was the reason they hurried up and this was the removal of a huge placental polyp which was a reason for her uh, bleeding because of incomplete removal of placenta at the time of cesarean so colleagues you should be very careful if you leave placenta inside a bladder injury occurs during cesarean you have to dissect the bladder and these things i have learned with my own patients excise the necrotic tissue nicely thoroughly give a vertical incision at the center remove all and dissect the bladder go in the para vesical areas laterally if you dissect the bladder it will always be in front of your eyes and suture going deep down what happens colleagues don't go so deep they just suture superficial and in next pregnancy she is again at risk i thought it is usually at the left angle let me start suturing from the left angle so please remember for correct suturing either take interrupted sutures at the angle or you have to be very good with your suturing so the angles are the the isthmoseal or the necrotic tissue is excised properly and bypass all this necrotic area the uterus has tremendous healing power no shortening of the cavity will be there all this tissue which is necrotic and bad excise it your patient will have beautiful recovery in the post of time and please go in the notes in detail bladder injury is there she will end up in fistula so be careful as this patient had bladder injury and you saw the bladder at the corner so dissect the bladder very nicely if you feel there is necrotic tissue later it will give up so you excise that part from the bladder this is a very important being a teacher for 40 years number of times they call and you see the upper cut edge of the cesarean is sutured by mistake to the posterior wall because there is a ridge and this was a patient who was referred to me that the patient after cesarean landed up in hematometra it's a long story of this patient i will finish with my time but i would just like to show you the video by mistake and often you will see this fibroid is the culprit at the time of cesarean it pushes the lower segment up the poor novice uh, surgeon at the time of cesarean by accident they suture the posterior wall of the uterus to the anterior edge so that there is a thick septum patient lands up in hematometra number of times i have corrected this defect and this is one where i said poor surgeon what will she do there were so many fibroids buried behind and that might have been the reason the lower segment the posterior wall was pushed up and she took by accident these sutures and you will see you have to dissect it properly all round this bladder dissection is the key to success otherwise you will find doing it so first you dissect the bladder nicely from that area and you see i drained hematometra luckily there was good thickness otherwise you excise the scar and suture it properly so that in next pregnancy there is hardly any risk of rupture and these are our ways of finding small small fibroids give light from the hysteroscope basically number of times i have seen these fibroids are we culprit in this kind of whenever i have seen that uh, the, the the suturing was wrong there was either fibroid or adenomyosis in these patients so this is what nice suturing should be done at the end fill up the bladder check for the bladder if there is any loss of integrity you do strengthening suturing at that time so that later such problems so this is what is 
a common mistake by youngsters that they suture the wrong area posteriorly because it leads to ridging. And this is the end result. Check for the bladder integrity always in these patients. Dissect bladder laterally. You will never find difficulty. Otherwise, bladder is at real risk in these patients because bladder is usually on the fold. Pleasant tacry. I think I will finish with my time. And this, these are the patients when they had placenta accreta, they come after cesarean and we manage them endoscopically and the lovely videos we have, I think I'll skip it because I have some good more videos to show you and I have to, this is a rare complication. This has been encountered only two, three times in my career because previously diagnosis was not made. See, the poor patient was referred to me after cesarean. She landed up in total amenorrhea and nobody could understand. And there was pain during periods. So what happened? This patient had, they never tell you, she had history of anti-PD and C three years back. So what has happened? I'll show you in the video that there was, you know, fistula, but uh, after cesarean, since the uterus got stuck to the anterior wall of the abdomen and this fistula got a chance. So this was the laparoscopic view in this 24 years young girl who was supposed to be amenorrheic but having hidden periods in peritoneal fistula posteriorly. So this was the hysteroscopic view I could pinpoint posterior cervix a hole and I must admit the patients hide the history. I said how spontaneously a fistula can form and then she told that she had an MTP and nobody told her might have had a perforation and her periods after the cesarean were getting collected through that hole into the posterior peritoneum so she landed up in total amenorrhea and this was the way we did it because she wanted another baby she had landed up in complete uh, amenorrhea as her periods were getting collected in posterior pouch beyond that defect so this is the way always keep a marker this is the cervix from hysteroscopy i pinpointed the hole through laparoscope i went to the same hole and you have to increase the hole excise the margins and then suture otherwise your patient will not get correction of the defect as it is a fistula so this is what bypassing freshening the edges and then suturing the defect correctly and, and removing all those adhesions which were making the uterus stuck to the anterior abdominal wall and patient had lovely monthly periods i think she's pregnant now and this was the bypassing and correcting the so-called benign fistula but it led to collection of periods as after cesarean she had that bad adhesion anterior uh, uterine wall getting stuck to anterior abdominal wall and the patient resumed her periods from next cycle on this got uteroperitoneal fistula got corrected this is another lovely complications yusuf syndrome for years we have been managing it with open but recently we started doing and this is what again colleagues i said fibroids are majority of time my see culprit this is the video of this patient who after cesarean started having hemorrhea the periods were coming through her urinary bladder and was amenorrhea this was the posterior fibroid at the time of cesarean must have led to the problem and see this catheter into the urinary bladder this catheter somebody has put it through the cervix it is through the urinary bladder because of yusuf syndrome means once you suture accidentally the bladder to the lower uterine segment at the time of cesarean the fistula forms between the bladder and the cesarean scar. So this pass a catheter through the bladder 
to the drop will be so simple cases once you have and she gave thank you ayaji thank you everyone